Hi, you've reached the Shell residence. Today is Tuesday, September 11th. My dad said the way I saw the world was a gift. That I was different than everyone else. Hello, welcome to What the Flick. I am Christy. This is Matt. That's Lonzo. That's Ben. We're talking about Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, which is a horrible title, but it's the title of the book that it's based on. So yeah, we got to go with it. It's not a great title, but it's also not a great movie. <laughs> um, uh, it's the story uh, of a young boy, what is he, 10, 11? 11. 11. Yeah, who's uh, very close to his father. He's a kid who doesn't really uh, fit in, and his closest relationship, clearly, uh, friends, everything is with his dad. Uh, and his father is, uh, tragically, as everybody was, killed on uh, September 11th, and uh, in finding a little uh, trinket of his father's begins uh, an adventure. His father and he had many great adventures exploring New York City, and he sets out to sort of discover what this key he finds, what, what it unlocks. Uh, and in the process, uh, we're supposed to believe, I guess, uh, learns a great deal about uh, himself and his father and the nature of humanity. A great game we'd play was Reconnaissance Expedition. He told me to bring back something from every decade in the 20th century. I found something from every decade. Already? <laughs> you rock. Listen to me, I'm going I'm to be home in about 20 minutes. No, you listen to me. We broke a window to let in some air. Now I'm going to be okay. The building and there was smoke everywhere. They're trying to save us. Where are you? Uh, I'm on the 106th floor. An American Airlines plane was hijacked. Thomas, you listen to me and you come home. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna try to call you again in a few minutes. Please just stay talking to me. After he died, I found this key in my dad's closet. He must have wanted me to find something. The clues, of course. What was the dad wanted me to find? Nothing made sense. It's never gonna make sense because it doesn't. What was the lesson Dad wanted me to learn? You met my dad? Isn't everyone somehow odd? I want you to come with me. Too old. Are you all right? Too young. Too lonely. Sorry, I don't know anything about your father. You're too afraid. What do you miss about it? I miss his voice telling me he loves me. Dad told me I really love your mother. You're such a good girl. Maybe everybody's looking for something. Do you think we'll find the lock? I'm not so sure either. Dad said, sometimes we have to face our fears. This is truly the most amazing thing. Extremely loud and incredibly close. That's how my wife describes me. And then she says, move and shut up. This is a you know big holiday movie. These movies that come out this time of year have yeah, a lot of expectations. Who doesn't want to see a 9-11 movie for Christmas? Right, no, but it's, it is very emotional. It's this time of year. It's um, hugely mawkish and painful to watch. Yes. Kind of. I mean, it's funny. This is being sold as a Tom Hanks, Sandra Bullock movie. And it, no, it is a Thomas Horn movie <laughs> who you've never heard of. Uh, he apparently was on, like, Youth Jeopardy he was or on something. on Jeopardy. And that's how they found him. Yes. And, uh, and there's a point in the film where he says that he was tested for Asperger's, but the results were inconclusive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I have my I theories. Who, I don't know who your doctor so, was. So that yeah. conclusion is just <laughs> asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not you, how you respond to the movie really depends on how you respond to this kid's performance totally. and this character. Right. Because this this, he is front and center in your face for the entire running time. And, 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 we're, and we see uh, other people, strangers, as he goes off in this adventure, mm. uh, sort of to uh, this mystery, to unlock this mystery, find out what this key of his father unlocks, because it's, again, it's his last moment we're led to believe as he tries to make some eight-minute reference. His eight minutes, I didn't even understand that, <laughs> drifting away with his father. Uh, he encounters all these other people who he has this significant connection with. And... I had a great deal of trouble believing that these people would react to this kid in this manner. Well, there is the thing that happens at the end that explains why they react to him. Yeah, that I know, way, but which but is sort of a cheat. It's totally a cheat because then you, you're like asked to think differently about right. the last hour and forty-five and, minutes. And oddly enough, that's the one movie, the one moment of the movie that really works. Yes, that's right. That actually, so, you where you sort of feel something, but yeah, but then you think about it, like, wait, that's so that's so right, phony. So I, haven't, I, I haven't seen the movie. I'm gonna guess it's like the Sixth Sense, and he's been dead all along. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a better twist. I yeah, would have no, liked that maybe. one better. No, you know what it is. I mean, yeah, he is the kid's front and center for the whole thing. 
and they didn't really do him any favors by giving him these enormous, long, shrill tirades, yeah. right? And they just go on interminably. I know they're meant to be expressed in, uh, expression of his angst, his turmoil, his inability to really communicate. I mean, he's super, super smart, but also very stunted in some ways. And he just goes in these shrill, long spiels, and that's hard to watch. Even though he's a kid who is in pain, we should and, feel and, bad for him. And I don't want to say that it's still too soon to make a 9-11 movie 10 years later, but it, I, you know, it's, it's still such a wound for people. I don't trust big Hollywood studios to not make this gross. I think and we this all is, agree it's too soon to make a shitty one. Well, yeah, and this is this is kind of gross. And it's made by Stephen Daldry, who I, I really liked his first two films. He, he made Billy Elliot. I liked The Hours. But even when The Hours came out, people talked about how he has this sort of stultifying tastefulness that kind of drowns everything. And now that I've seen The Reader and this movie, I'm inclined to agree with the naysayers. I mean, he's so... Tasteful until he's not. Until he's not. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it, it's uh, you know, I, I loved the reader. I, I obviously I yeah. agree with you on this. I didn't. I didn't love this. I I, I think that it's you know, and I, I hate to say it because it, he's a kid, but I mean, or and then it's then it's on Stephen Daldry for putting him in these mm -hmm. terrible situations. But I mean, you you're you're giving your movie over to this kid in a manner that it just doesn't. It does not connect. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. difficult to watch him in a lot of scenes. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, he's, he's and, the movie. And, and we can pin part of the blame on Eric Roth, who did the adaptation of the Jonathan Safran Foer novel, who did Benjamin Button, which I hated, uh, and Forrest Gump, which, you know. I hated. Take, take from that what you will. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so yeah, I, I did this movie, I think it's hard is in the right place, I guess. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it's just. It, it, you know, it was, it, one of the things you talk we're talking about these 9 11 uh, uh, sort of reference, not references, the movie is obviously stems from this moment. This sure. is, it all stems from that moment. And but it, it you takes. You see the. It takes some of the. Fire it, worse bodies. than seeing the towers on fire and the bodies, you take what to me is sort of the most emotionally wrenching part of 9 11 which is phone calls people trapped in the towers made to their yeah, families. Right. And they really play that up, and that is diff It's just. It's horrible. It's exploitative. It felt it's, exploitative it's, it's, at the times, yeah. yeah. It's emotional pornography, as you yeah. might. Yeah. All right, so numbers. But Viola Davis is really good. Right. Yeah, she's she, in like she two is, scenes, and yeah, she's, she's excellent in both of them. Any but movie you know, is better with Viola Davis. None of the people. And Sandra Bullock is good in the uh, one scene. I, I, in her big in moment. Her in her one big scene. Moment. But yeah. the thing is, like, no, no one here feels like a real person. Not the main characters, and not these people that he goes and meets no. on his journey. Viola Davis gets like one good scene. Jeffrey Wright gets like one yeah. good scene. But they're he's, the only people I remember. The other ones even, I don't even. Even Max von Sydow, that oh, yeah, character Max feels von super right. contrived. He's you know one of the great actors of all time, but right. the character just. But he was he was playing scenes from The Artist. Yes. As it were. He's, yeah, he's the best part of it, though. He's sort of charming. Okay. That's, that's why I give it a three. I give it a three from Max von Sydow. Uh, I'm a little more generous. I'll say it's a, uh, I'll give it a 4.8. Yeah, I gave it a 4.8. I feel like that was too high. But it comes to about the <laughs> right number between all of us of, of uh, 4.2. For the extremely was. loud, incredibly close. Where a lot of is it? Uh, it's about sixty percent on the tomato meter right so now. It just climbed its way up into fresh territory, but it'll probably go back down as we get more reviews in. Okay. All right. Thanks, Enjoy. Bye. Thanks. Merry Christmas.